All right, I believe we're recording. Uh, so session two of the Four Dagger Core Investigations, LLC. Uh, <laughs> who would like to give the recap? Well, we started off in, uh, I was, my character was asleep in the back of our detective agency. Uh, he woke up. Apparently, one of the detectives is a morning person, which is definitely grounds to be fired. Uh, he woke him up after uh, a hard night of drinking, and he made his way out only to discover that we have now several past due rent notices saying that we owe 400 gold pieces, including a 100 gold piece penalty, which is about three months rent with the penalty on this uh, tiny little office with its mostly broken and scavenged furniture. Uh, we do, however, have a very nice sign outside that identifies us. So luckily, uh, unfortunately, it does get vandalized every night, but it is repainted every morning. Always have to change uh, that, three and four half the time. Right. Maybe two soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, the sign was enough to bring in, uh, I forget, what was the bugbear's name? Kirthen. Yeah, that's right. The bugbear Kirthen in shining armor with, his, uh, with a silver dragon emblem on it came in uh, with a letter from K.L. Estella, who resides way up in the upper towers of Sharn in the Skyway, I think it's called, right? Skyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was offering, apparently we had been recommended to her, which we all understood makes no sense whatsoever, given how far below her we are. Uh, we, would, we would be lucky to get hit in the eye with her toilet water at this level yes. of shard. But somehow, word of our small detective agency uh, that doesn't make enough money to pay the rent made it all the way up to her. But she nonetheless agreed, said she would pay us 50 gold pieces just for coming, so that certainly seemed worth it. Uh, Kirthen then gave us the money and escorted us up. Uh, we had to go through the rain and in a magical flying carriage that appeared to be air-conditioned, so between the rain and the air-conditioning, it was freezing cold. Uh, he then, we had to give up our weapons in order to even get into the Skyway, but were eventually led to the Silver Vine Manor where Tella resides. She was a, a very regal, all too regal elf reclining on a couch as we came in, wearing a glamour weave dress that looked like smoke swirling around her. Uh, platinum blonde with jewelry made of silver and jet. She told us that a group of men had somehow broken into her home. She herself was a scholar of antiquities. And these men stole a either marble or porcelain, a, a white hand that had been severed from a statue and that had once been found in the ruins of the, in the fallen from the towers that fell down upon it. One of the men who broke in to try to kill them had a strange tattoo, an image of a disc or a bowl that was held in two hands that was on him. Otherwise, it looked as if he had uh, in part been electrocuted, although uh, some of the guards may have also attacked him as well. He was otherwise in rags, and it seemed as if he and the thieves knew exactly where they were going in this mansion and were only after the one thing as they had to walk past a bunch of other fairly small, valuable looking items to get to it. And it was inside a cabinet, so they would have had to have known to go into that cabinet to get it. The hand itself is magical, and it's clearly part of a larger statue. The magic is too subtle to discern what school it would be from, but she got it from a bazaar at Morgrave University. Uh, we know that it's probably down in the Fallen, because the dead man had been, uh, they, they'd cast speak with dead on the dead man. We know that uh, they are, he is part of some sort of cult, we think, uh, who are being guided by the wisdom of the past, whatever that is, and reassembling this statue. We were told that we can seek out a woman named Fela, who's a priestess of the silver fucking flame, <laughs> who apparently resides in the fallen. <laughs> and she'd be a resource, but, uh, Sharp is not so sure we need to go talk to that cultist. <laughs> so we did get a letter of passage to come back to the manor if we need to. Uh, 
we then left and were making our way back down. I think that's probably when my character would have gone to meet with his contact at Moorgrave University. Uh, and then we would have circled up back at the detective agency, I assume. Or maybe we've all just split up and nobody knows where anybody else is. So we've just split the party for the whole session. <laughs> so um, at this point, once you guys uh, got back, I imagine each of you made arrangements to kind of split up and, and go and speak to your contacts uh, regarding the situation, to try and get some more information since, you know, obviously you're a little suspicious about the circumstances. Um, so it is now the next day, uh, which is... Zarentar uh, 4, uh, and <clears throat> which is kind of the equivalent to Wednesday. Um, and uh, um, Joe Farr um, was probably, he had returned soonest. Uh, and then shortly after that, um, he, Joe Farr probably didn't even spend more than a couple of hours uh, going to talk to the people that he was going to talk to. Uh, how he had spent his time before returning to the investigation uh, office, uh, Joe Farr can let us know what that looked like. Um, Silhana um, returned next, uh, probably sometime either late in that, that uh, last evening or early this morning. Uh, and I imagine Sharp was the final person to come back. Uh, strangely, <clears throat> um, uh, what's, what's Ryan's character's name again? <laughs> Well, Ryan's oh. character. Uh, Varys. Varys, right? Varys, that's right. So Varys is, is strangely has not yet returned. Um, He's probably with that young man he met the other week. Yeah. <laughs> it's by the spices. Varys took it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so so as, as you guys are... Uh, returning, you guys can go ahead and describe uh, what what your journey back to the uh, office looked like. And as you guys are starting to pile in, go ahead and uh, you know re recount whatever it is that you may have learned and what you may want to share with the others. As I'm getting yes. back last, uh, I would probably, when I get back, I would look probably um, a little worn out, like somebody who's been walking for like eight hours to get to Morgrave University and back via the least costly route possible. <laughs> so the longest possible path I could find. <laughs> but sober, strangely sober for this time of night. I'm very suspicious at this point. Though. Are you okay? What's wrong with you? I'm fine. It's just been a, a lot of walking today. So what did you guys find? No leads on the graffiti. <coughs> what did you find about our actual case rather than the graffiti? <laughs> it's perplexing. I'm thinking about it. Silhana, anything from you? Oh, thank God the lag ended finally. Holy shit, everyone was a robot. <laughs> Mind you, that's terrible here. Um, well, I found out that uh, when the fall happened, a lot of it fell around a place called Korlak Hall, and that uh, there's people there called the Reavers who apparently are related to this somehow. They might actually have some meaning behind this object. It, it's believed that the area is haunted. 
or at least in the terms of the locals, that's what they call it. So it's not impossible they may be related to the building when it fell there. Pause real quick. Solana, uh, is there any noticeable change or anything that the others might notice about you uh, different than the, the day that you left? Um, honestly, not really. Maybe a bit of blood on me, but nothing too serious. Okay. I just, I just wanted to ask that question. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> after how things went, they didn't go too badly for me, to be honest. Well, I went and met with Herlo Thrumbo at Moorgrave University, but all he really told me was a strange, really wild conspiracy theory about a uh, cabal of international rich people who have formed some sort of cartel for reasons he can't understand. Uh, and he believes KLS is probably a part of this cartel, secretly pulling the strings on every nation in the five nations from behind the scenes. They didn't happen to have a carriage called the Lolita Express, did they? He also suggested it could just be a club, so you never know. <clears throat> Very interesting. So, what time of night is it? <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's probably about uh, late morning uh, the next day. So we might as well head down there, although this early, I don't know whether or not my contact in the Fallen will be even open, let alone able to provide us with any useful information. Still, it should be easy enough to find information about these Reavers. They sound like the sort who probably have a lot of rumors flying around about them. That's how it seems. Supposedly, they go ahead and mess with their bodies in different ways, ritualistically. But we'll find out when we're there. <laughs> Sounds perverse. I have a feeling that my brother would be into it. Well, I'll have to speak with him when I see him again. That would be the best. So I will say that your guys' knowledge of Varys, uh, it's, it's not uncommon for him to spend a few days away when he's meeting this particular contact. Um, so it wouldn't necessarily arise any suspicion uh, for your group that that he's not back <clears throat> i was going to assume that anyway lest we derail <laughs> the <Right>. adventure <laughs> looking for virus <laughs> <laughs> you know like uh it's not early enough to say he's he's been captured by the reavers <laughs> honestly it wouldn't be the first time um so I don't know what the best way would be to get to the Fallen from where we are. Yeah, does anyone know how? <laughs> so uh, the Fallen is actually not too far from where you are. Um, it's, it's probably about an hour's walk, uh, maybe an hour and a half, depending on you know the, the foot traffic between the two areas. Mm, so, but... Uh, Joe Farr, did you, did, did you, or, well, Peter, did you get a chance to read the information I sent you? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so. It was all about the graffiti, wasn't it? <laughs> Every word of it about the graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Joe Farr is focused on what's really important. <laughs> right. He found like a single black hair at the scene of the crime. Oh shit! <laughs> Narrowed it down. God damn it! <laughs> Wait a minute. What color was Curthen's hair? <laughs> Could have been planted. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you guys are heading down to the Fallen, then. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right. So. 
you guys make your way uh, through the various streets and passageways. It's most of it is still uh, fairly much indoors. Uh, there are a couple of towers that you need to travel through, but most of these towers are connected via, especially on the lower levels, they're connected via tunnels um, that kind of go between. So you don't actually uh, need or, or even have an opportunity to go outside as you're as you're passing between these things and and largely uh, these areas do look the same. They change slightly as you enter a different district as, as some of the you know architectural aspects may change a bit or uh, some of the ways that people are going about interacting the number of uh, storefronts versus uh, warehouses and things of that nature. <clears throat> but, but definitely as you're getting closer to Fallen uh, and as you're encountering like this, this space, uh, this is, this, you eventually get to a point where you are outdoors. Uh, much of Fallen is outside. There is no, fall, the, the district that encompasses Fallen doesn't really have a, a higher district until you get to the actual floating towers um, that that may be stationed above Fallen. So as you guys uh, encounter uh, the the outside, uh, it's it's actually a, a fairly clear day today. Um, it's it's a brisk 44 degrees ish. So, but it's it's just a gentle breeze, and uh, um, and you get to experience sunshine, which I imagine is uh, probably a rarity living within the towers of Sharn. Um, but uh, despite the fact that the uh, event took place uh, 80 years ago, you can definitely see the signs of wreckage that still kind of perfuse the area um, because it is, it is such a poor area that it's just, there's, there's a lot of ruins. You can see some people who have tried to rebuild to, to varying degrees, but, but the, the abject poverty is just so intense that many people just left this place as, as um, uh, in in disrepair to to find other homes, but clearly not everybody is so fortunate. Uh, and so there are some what appear to be shanty towns where uh, some of the uh, buildings or or dwellings are a little bit more makeshift, um, using you know, corrugated steel recovered from the wreckage of of the tower um, or uh, various scraps to, to create, you know, kind of huts. Um, and, and many of the people that you see walking around uh, are dressed in, it's not quite rags, but uh, it's lots of um, like, uh, uh, what, what are those things that, uh, like the canvas, uh, Clothing made of like stiff, durable canvas, um, but it's very dirty. Uh, and then <clears throat> as you get closer uh, to the establishment where Sharp is directing you, uh, you, you see a building that kind of stands out to some degree. Um, and then, and Sharp, did you want to describe what that building looks like? Uh, you mean the ruins of the temple or the tavern itself? No, the the tavern. Yeah, the the tavern. It's partially crushed in. Like the there clearly used to be upper floors to it that no longer exist, or at least aren't that usable. Uh, but the downstairs is largely intact. It was probably you know one of the walls was probably caved in, but it's been patched up a long time ago. Uh, it's across from a shattered temple. Uh, and inside the bar itself, as soon as you walk in, you can see they salvaged what remains of a statue of the goddess Eladra of the Sovereign Host, who somewhat profanely, but uh, 
people here don't seem to care now it takes up the middle of the bar the the middle of the space in the tavern i should say not not on the bar itself uh, and it's called the blue temple arms although the sign they have is really shoddy and not nearly as nice as ours <laughs> for the right price that can change so uh, it's taken you uh, about an hour and a half to get here um, and so it is still probably about noon uh, so this is about the time that there is a little bit of a crowd but for, for the Blue Tavern Inn the crowd is, is generally fewer than 10 people just because of uh, the, the poverty it, it's it, it, Recently, especially, it's been uh, a bit more difficult because of uh, economic situations that have people have uh, been losing jobs. Uh, so Brash is behind the bar. You can see him serving uh, a couple of people their food from uh, from um, the, handing them from behind the bar. And as they walk away, he notices Sharp and uh, a big smile spreads across his face. Uh, and he says, well, Sharp, didn't expect to see you. How have you been? Well, been about as well as always. Didn't really expect to be down here today, but uh, needed to get some lunch and uh, pick your brain a bit. Well, and absolutely. Position ourselves sort of at the end of the bar away from people if we can manage it so uh will there be all three of you dining today or just you sharp yeah why not we're relatively rolling in coin more deaths than coin but relatively rolling in coin well, might as well get three lunches well count your blessings to the host while you can right <laughs> All right, so uh, three bowls of stew coming up. Uh, and then, so uh, Brash goes uh, back into the kitchen uh, for a few minutes and then comes out with uh, three piping hot bowls of, of stew. Um, nice, uh, it's, it's actually uh, a bit, especially sharp it's it's a bit meatier than you might expect uh but there's there's uh also some some good vegetables in there and uh <clears throat> yeah so brash uh what do you know about the reavers you know i was having such a nice day why why you got to spoil it with talk of the reavers well the word above is that they may have stolen something from somebody who wants it back somebody who's willing to pay to get it back and that's why we're down here today was it some kind of piece of stone it was some kind of piece of stone yeah they're doing yeah, how that. many cast them minor illusion to show the uh that image of the <laughs> ball or disc like basically just an image of that guy's tattoo mm -hmm. One of the thieves had this mark on him. Yeah, that's definitely a reaver mark. Uh, yeah, they they go about uh, hunting for rocks and stones. Uh, seems to be very particular about the ones that they want. Are they at all organized? The name Reavers doesn't necessarily suggest uh, a lot of smarts on their part, and yet somehow they got from here all the way up, I'll say, to the Skyway, uh, and somehow didn't get caught. Uh, the Reavers, are, they're definitely not what you would consider organized, but strangely, they there's a couple of different, uh, I guess you could call them uh, groups, of reavers uh they they each have their own kind of territory but they all congregate around the corlac hall um generally you want to stay away from them though uh there's 
not not all of them, but I've heard a lot of them are cannibals. And you, you know, we don't really like cannibals around these parts, Shark. I, uh, I'm sort of not actually eating, but more mixing my stew around <laughs> <laughs> as he says this. Oh, don't worry, Sharp. It's, uh, I've, uh, had a bit of good luck, and I, I actually have, a uh, uh, number of bunnies that I've been raising specifically for the stew, so. If you say so, then I'll take a bite of the stew. Damn badge bunnies. What? So, have, uh, what other bits of stone have they been stealing and who they've been stealing it from? Well, you know, it's, it's strange. They're not interested in the, the shiny stones or, uh, you know, some of the, you, you know, this place has been scavenged long ago when that, that wreckage happened, but you know, every once in a while, you come across some nice gems or uh, an interesting piece of glass. Uh, they don't seem to care about much of that. It's, it's just uh, mostly uh, pure white stone. Sometimes it, they're in str strange shapes, but not really, not really sure what they're getting at there. Do you know anyone else who's been? Uh dealing with these reavers? Someone who may know them a little more personally? Well, I don't know if I'd say know them personally, but Faella is a good person to talk to. She's, she really is kind of uh, what you'd call a pillar of the community. Or something. So I'll start eating my stew. How do you spell and her name in Simplify Common? <laughs> it is uh, F A E L A. And I'd order uh, three of his cheapest ales. Uh, all right. <laughs> What's this place um, called again? The Blue Tavern Inn or Blue Temple Arms? What is it? The Blue Temple Arms. Okay. Yeah. I imagine once upon a time the Temple of Aladra was actually blue, but it was <laughs> mostly paint, and 80 years later it is not so much. <laughs> um,. So, um, Brash, uh, kind of, um, looks to each of you and says, uh, so is there, what, what is your business with the Reavers? Why are you asking about them? Well, like I said, somebody wants their stone back. Oh, they, they took... They took it from somebody and they actually want it? Apparently, uh, it had sentimental value for one person they took this stone from. So, frankly, I don't care if they keep all the rest, but I got to try to get mm. this one back. Yeah, I can't say that there's anything too special about them, but if you get between a reaver and one of these stones, they're not, not going to mince words if they could even speak don't really speak. Uh, they're going to just uh, kill you and anybody else that gets between them and these rocks that they're hunting about. They sound like out of work geologists. <laughs> uh, I suppose in some very dark world that could be. So you got gangs of geologists down here. <laughs> Do they come in here often? What do they look like? No, no, Reavers never come around here. If uh, if they did, it'd be really bad for business. Like I said, they've been known to eat people. Um, but they like rocks. They do like rocks, but you know, do most of them, them, most of them can't even speak 
or if they do, they don't. They just kind of grunt and yell at each other. <clears throat> Why am I picturing a geologist biker gang now? <laughs> Just coming to town. We're here to see what type of rocks you got here, son, and to smash up the bar and everything. So they they hang around this Kordak Hall. Yep. And that place itself is a little scary. <coughs> not just, just because just... not just because of the Reavers. They just congregate. The, what what uh, delineates uh, between these gangs? The types of rocks they like. No, uh, kind of their their attitudes. There are some that are really vicious, really savage. Um, others, they kind of they're a little bit more try to keep to themselves. I guess you could say. And you've never heard of any of them ever having any sort of organization. Like I said, somebody smarter than these mooks had to figure out how to get them up to the skyway. You know, that's that's the strange thing about it. They don't seem to have any organization. It's it's not like they have anybody specifically telling them where to go or what to do. At least nobody that I've known to ever hear of anything like that. But they and and most of them they're they're barely people more like animals so the fact that wait a minute you said that they went up the skyway they made it that far up and then got back apparently yep i have heard stories of them occasionally venturing out of fallen but never that far up we need to go find that halfling who we saw <laughs> who was being chased. He probably was like the mule who got them up there. <laughs> Dude, they hadn't already been eaten. <laughs> Do um, they have any type of organized religion or any belief system? Like I said, most people don't really get a chance to talk to them. Uh, you see a reaver, you tend to try and hope they didn't see you. And if they do see you, they're not the kind that are hungering for long pig. You know what I mean? So what are these, uh, what are their gangs? Or you said there were some gangs. What are they called? Ignis, Marble, Cole, Slate, something like that? What are they called? Uh, you know, they have, they have uh, a couple of different names. Shale? Uh, there, there are some, uh, I mean, Blood drinkers. Uh, you can imagine why they're called blood drinkers. Uh, let's see. There's also some of them that we've taken to call the Night Stalkers. Th those ones. Uh, those ones seem a little bit more intelligent. They'll. They're. They're a little bit more purposeful and yeah, they've been known to do graffiti you know mess up signs um, not that i've known that's a very specific behavior anyways so we got the blood drinkers which obviously you want to keep away from the night stalkers who you know, you might, those ones, you might actually be able to talk to. Um, then you got the stone keepers. Let's see. Uh, One that actually fits the geology theme. <laughs> they probably lead the entire group. Yeah, uh, those ones, you don't really see those ones too much. Um, usually, if you're, if you're encountering one of the Reavers, you're going to encounter either the Blood Drinkers or the Night Stalkers. Mm, I can't think of any of the other ones. 
I'll ask around, see if there's anything else about the Reavers to know, but, oh, you know, I, I do think I recall they, sometimes they're seen traveling with dogs. Dogs like uh, corgis or something? Dogs like dogs that'll rip a man in pieces. I take a mouthful of stew and look at Joe Farr waiting for some outlandish connection to graffiti or geology. <laughs> Damn corgi. <laughs> oh, is it true that Colac Hall is haunted? I can't say from personal experience, but I've known a lot of people that tell some pretty interesting stories about that place. We'll interesting stories like ghosts or vampires or um, like, the sky people. Like strange lights uh, in the area. Really terrifying sounds. The kind of sounds that a person couldn't make but that'll freeze your heart cold and you'll feel that chill go right into your bones. Okay. Yeah, people don't really like going around there. The Reavers are bad enough, but then if you add ghosts into that equation, people like to, to keep away from things like that. It's bad enough around here. Don't need anything more added to it. No, oh, doesn't seem too bad. At least you have sunlight. Really? <laughs> we also have, I, I don't know if you noticed, but yesterday it was freezing rain <laughs> everywhere. We also got that too. And these roofs are not known for their well sealed thatches i'm going to take a look at the uh statue does it have two hands or only one i i imagine i didn't actually think the statue of aladra i didn't actually think it through quite that far i sort of imagined it was like the top half <laughs> of a much larger statue that probably broke and they okay. heaved it in here but I, I would imagine it has like two arms since it's the blue temple arms. Nothing's been stolen from the statue. I mean it's pretty it's pretty banged up, so it's not in good as good a shape as it once was. Uh, but I would imagine it still has two hands. They haven't taken one of the hands from this one as well. Uh I would also say that the the statues, the the stone of the statues look a bit different than what was described to you by uh, Kalis. The the Kalis described the the stone as is really uh, alabaster white, uh, whereas the the stone of uh, Aladra is a little bit of a grayer type stone. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm as concerned about the ghosts as I am about the cannibals myself. Yeah, cannibal they'll ruin ghosts. your morning, and then some. Well, if they're cannibal corpses, we could be in big trouble. But that's grounds for expulsion right there. <laughs> right, so, so what do we owe you for the stew? Uh, let's call it five copper even. Uh, I will give him a silver piece. Keep it. We'll even up some other time. I hope we do. You know, you're always welcome here, Sharp, as well as anybody that's a friend of yours. And on the plus side, if I'm eaten by cannibals, that's five free copper. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't come to that, though. <laughs> and then you notice uh, uh, Brash kind of uh, 
give uh, Sharp a, a kind of um, seductive wink. <laughs> <laughs> So do either of you have an idea on where to go next? I'm just as happy to head directly over to, uh, what was it called? Kordak Hall. Kordak Hall. As opposed to going and talking to Fela. Yeah, I could head with you. <laughs> All right, so you guys are going to just head right to Kordak Hall? Yep. Okay. Uh, Some level, uh, Sharp was hoping to be talked out of this, but <laughs> 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 no. but he is really on the fence about talking to Fela. So, all right. Um, so, uh, Brash can certainly give you guys directions on how to get there. Uh, it's it's absolutely in the heart of Fallen. Uh, and, and as you guys are, are getting closer and closer to the epicenter of the, the glass tower falling upon this district, uh, the, you see fewer and fewer people and those that you do see are really in bad shape. They're emaciated with hunger. They're keeping to the shadows, uh, seeing people of of your station because you know the the way that you guys are dressed and present yourselves you may as well be uh noblemen compared to them um eventually there's there's absolutely no people in the streets uh in fact uh a lot of times you'll notice some blood stains uh or even a sliver of bleached bone scattered amidst the rubble and the refuse. Um, so as we walk, I am going to summon, like, into a sheath at my <coughs> side, a black-bladed longsword, and suggest to the, to the other two, when we get there, it actually may be a little bit smarter for us to find a good place to take cover and just observe for a while and see if we can see any of the comings and goings of these reavers rather than just march in and wait to be bitten. I'm going to actually be taking, keeping a very close eye on everything as we go through because I have a feeling we're being watched if no one's in the streets right now. <laughs> uh, so, one second. Okay, so uh, yeah, um, it's interesting that you should say that, Solana, because uh, as you guys are walking through the streets, uh, you hear uh, what sounds like a, uh, a stone being kicked uh, and, and uh, from a slightly different direction, a crunch of glass. Uh, and as you guys turn around, you notice uh, a, let's see, a three creatures that are, they appear to be humanoid. It, it's hard to tell exactly if they're human or, or half orc or what, but uh, they're in incredibly crude armor, if it, it can even be called armor more like layers of torn stained cloth that have been kind of tied together with uh, harder leather. Um, and each of them are wielding makeshift clubs and cudgels. Their eyes are wild, their lips flecked with froth, and their faces and hair crusted with dried blood. And the minute that they you notice them, uh, they cry out and charge you. Uh, 
And so there's, there's two coming from one side and then one coming from another direction kind of converging uh, on you. So we're going to roll initiative with that. Yeah. I got a 10. Uh, 15 total. And I should have prepared more for this. Okay, so you guys turn to to uh, face your attackers, and that you you get ready, bracing yourselves for that, and then suddenly uh, you uh. Solana, you hear a thwack and uh, an immediate like, uh, like right by your ear. Mm. I look uh, around. Was it like an arrow or a bolt thwack? <laughs> so uh, you look to the ground and, and you do notice uh, a bolt that had broken uh, on the uh, some of the broken cobblestone of the street. Do I spot where it came from? Uh, so you turn around. You don't immediately see anybody, uh, but when it's uh, your turn, you could use your action to, to search. And it was definitely aimed at me, correct? Well, you, you, hear, you are the one that heard it whiz by you. OK, OK. <sighs> Just making sure it wasn't aiming at those guys, as opposed to us. Uh, and then with that, Solana, you are up, sharp on deck, Joe Far in the hole. Okay, uh, what's the environment we're in look like? Uh, so there is, is um, a, imagine uh, is a, just a city ruin. There are <clears throat> a number of broken buildings, there are some where it's just one or two freestanding walls and, and the, the rest of the building has been smashed in. Uh, then, and there's various piles of rubble. Um, and so there's, there's lots of things that uh, you could use to kind of put between yourself and your attackers or, um, you know, there's there's a lot of potential uh, ways to escape as well. Mm -hmm. And how far away are they from us? Uh, they are. You get the sense that by the time uh, they 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 will be upon you very quickly. No more than probably by by the time that it's their turn to act, they'll be able to get to you. Well, we have a sniper in the tower, and it's either fight or flight. What do you guys think? Well, this is probably our best source of information, is taking one of these guys. Okay, got it. I'll go to the one who's by himself, and can I make it to him? Yeah. Okay. Make my way up to him, and, um, hmm. Should I do it, or shouldn't I do it? No, nope, I'm going to boop him in the head with a kick. Uh, 
And that is a 19 to hit him. That hits. Okay. And then, uh, ooh, oh, boy. Five damage. Hole. Does it look like he even cared? <laughs> um... With five damage? I mean, he's definitely feeling it. Okay. I feel as much. Okay, I'm going to have to spend a key point and do flurry of blows then. Shit. Okay, then. Uh, 19 plus uh, 24 to hit. That's my first flurry. Yeah, that's uh, three and uh, six damage, bludgeoning. And... I am going to have him make a 12 dexterity saving throw or fall prone. Okay. He got a natural 20. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Next kick. Uh, that is a 17 to hit. It hits. Okay. And that is five more <laughs> bludgeoning damage. And I think... Alright, so at this point you strike him uh, and his his nose breaks. Uh, he's got blood shooting everywhere. Uh, and so he's he is bloodied. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's all for me then. Okay. So, uh, Sharp is up, Jofar on deck, uh, Reaver's in the hole. So, I will uh, stride up next to Silhana. Hmm. Are they are they bunched up or not? Are they spread out? So, they're the one that Solana uh went towards was the lone one on your other side you have two who are together and rushing forward okay so i will i will go in their direction uh as a bonus action uh, i'm gonna cast wrathful smite and then as my action i uh equip my shield because i didn't say i was doing that okay (laughs) Uh, all right, so then that's your action there. Uh, Joe Farr, you're up. Okay, so Sharp is right next to me, right? I uh, advanced on the other two who were incoming. Yeah. But you didn't So, so me. if you're, so from your perspective, you have Solana on your right, uh, and Sharp is on your left. The uh, Solana has one person that she's dealing with, and Sharp has two people that are upon him. Okay, but they haven't gotten to him yet. No, they have because he got to them. Okay. Unless, unless Sharp, you weren't trying to move right up on them. Yeah, I was giving them something to go after, so okay. I moved right up to them. Okay, okay, so there's no gap in between. Yeah. I was going to run up and throw ball bearings in their way as they approach Sharp, but if he's in melee already, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll run up to one of them and do... uh, What can I do? Do Okay. So you're going to run up to one of them that's with Sharp? Yeah. Okay. And do, I guess I can do swift strike, so I get two attacks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want to hit both of them with your attack? Or do you want to yeah. hit one with both attacks or two with one attack? Oh, the same one. Okay. And I miss with the first one. That's a nine. Yeah, the misses. And 19. That hits. And two damage. <laughs> All right. How's he look? Uh, good head. Good head. Good head. And he's he's pretty okay right now. Um, 
Good job, Jafar. You can do it. <laughs> okay. So the one that uh, Solana attacked uh, is going uh, right up and gonna engage her. Uh, first attack roll is a 23. You know, that just might hit. Uh, and then that is four bludgeoning damage on you. <laughs> and then the second attack is a 20, not natural. That hits. Uh, and that's six <laughs> Bludgeoning damage. Ow. <laughs> TPK, first encounter. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the two that uh, Sharp and Jofar have engaged, uh, the, uh, the, one of them is going after Sharp. Uh, and that one rolled a 18 to hit. I'm sure. Yes, that hits. Okay. But you know what? What the hell? I'm going to spend a luck point and make a reroll. Okay. <laughs> uh, so then that's a, a, actually a 12. So that misses. So mm -hmm. I, uh, just having like strapped my shield onto my arm, I immediately go up and give him the evil eye symbol. Which probably just confuses him, but miss it. It's, it him yeah, he kind of looks like, huh? <laughs> uh, and, and you can see that there's not as much oomph in the attack. Uh, but then he follows through with another one, uh, but also misses. He, you, you just really can perfuddle him. He's like, my, uh, Roll a seduction check with advantage. <laughs> Um, the w other one that Joe Farr has attempted to stab uh, raises his massive club uh, and rolled a 13 for a first attack. Yeah, that's a hit. Uh, so that's six damage, bludgeoning. And then the second attack is a 10. Oh, actually missed. Uh, and then... Uh, um, Solana, does a 19 hit you? Uh, yes. Is it a ranged attack? It is. Okay. But, so you're, you're thinking about using your, uh, Deflect the, missile. Does that require you to have to, to see where the attack is coming from? Uh, you can use your reaction to deflect or catch the missile when you are hit by a ranged weapon attack. Okay, so it doesn't require you to actually okay. see. No. Nope. So that first reduces the damage, right? And then if it's reduced to zero, you have the option of tossing it back for a Kai point? Uh, yes, that is okay. correct. Okay. Uh, so that is two damage. Uh, 1d10 plus six, so uh, nine damage reduced, and I'm not going to toss it back. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't know where that bolt came from anyway, so you wouldn't necessarily know where to toss it back. Do you have yeah. to toss it back to the target who shot you, or can you redirect you it not. to anyone? No, you don't you, have to you could You could redirect <laughs> it to anyone, so that is true. Yes. There's just the problem that if I were to do that, it would actually be weaker than me just using a key point for my uh, uh, normal attacks. <laughs> Flurry of blows. Okay. So we are at the, the, that was the top of the second round. So Solana, you're <coughs> up. Sharp on deck, Joe Far in the hole. Oh God, you guys are so annoying. Now go ahead and spend another key point because this guy's still looking pretty good. And I will, uh, oh, yep, I'm going to do flurry of blows and kick him in the head and try and knock him prone. That is a 
24 to hit. That hits. And then uh, five damage, and he needs to make a DC 12 saving throw or be knocked prone. Uh, yeah, Dexterity. 15. Okay. And he's still up, I take it? Yes. I thought so. Okay, try again. Uh, oh, that's not bad. Um, are you using your bonus action for just the normal uh, martial arts, or are you using flurry? I'm using flurry of blows for my bonus action. Okay. Yep. Uh, that's a uh, 18 to hit. That hits. And DC 12 deck save to fall prone, along with uh, six damage. And he is knock prone. Oh, thank God. Okay. And final attack. Just going to stomp him on the ground while he's there. That is a 17 to hit. That hits. And, oh, hey, uh, seven more bludgeoning damage. All right. And so you hit him uh, while he is down. Uh, and you you knock him out cold. Oh, good. I turn around. I got one. Oh, God, what's going on back here? Uh, by the way, um, just so you know, uh, when you're using your open hand technique, uh, you really can only use it when you're using uh, your flurry of blows. So that's only the, the two with your bonus action, not your yep. main attack. Yep, yep. Okay. That's I was going ahead and using key points for that ability. Okay, just making sure. All right, so Solana has knocked <laughs> one of them out cold. Uh, uh, of course, you can choose to finish the job. You also have some movement if you wanted to move into position with the others or uh, do something yeah, I, else. I got this guy knocked prone. I'm going to head towards the others. I don't know if I'll be able to make it with only 40 feet of move speed, though. Uh, so, yeah, you wouldn't be able to get there just yet. You would be able to get there with your next action, though. Okay, that works for me, then. I'm just going to move 40 feet and get ready. Okay. So, Sharp, you're up. Joe Far on deck. Um, Reaver's in the hole. I'm going to swing my longsword at whatever guy just tried to attack me. Uh, that is a 24. Uh, and he has to make a DC 13 uh, intelligence. Oh, for your wrathful smite? Yes, wisdom saving throw. He takes six points of slashing damage and five points of psychic damage from the attack. All right, he made the saving throw. He okay. rolled a natural 16. So he is not frightened. Okay. So what was the total da damage? Six, six points of slashing damage, five points of psychic damage. So 11 total? Yep. All right. They're insane. They could be immune to psychic damage for all I know. <laughs> this is possible. <laughs> uh, but you notice that the, the damage does have the effect that you would expect. Oh. Um. All right. So is that your full turn? Yep. All right. Uh, Joe Farr, you're up. Okay. Um, I will attack this guy again. Uh, 13. That hits. That's four damage. Okay. And second attack is a big miss. What'd you roll? Seven. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, the one that's attacking Joe Farr uh, actually uh, goes to grab him. So Joe Farr, uh, give me an athletics or dexterity check. 13. All right. He beat you by one, so you are now grappled. 
Uh, and he then begins uh, moving you back away from Sharp. So Sharp, you are you can take an opportunity attack if you want. Sure. Oh, a natural one. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this unorthodox <laughs> grappling technique. <laughs> so, uh, so Jofar, you've been dragged uh, 15 feet away from Sharp. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then he is going to to make another attack while he is grappling you. Uh, but I assume a ten misses. Uh, actually, it does. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then the uh, other one that is on sharp is actually going to go at the Joe far. So sharp, you ha you can make another opportunity attack if you want. Yeah, sure. Oh, wait a minute. You, you, you already used your reaction. Oh, right. Um, I was just, uh, just noting for myself that all of my spells are actually at level two warlock thing. I did not yes. realize that when I cast my spell. <laughs> oh, so did you do more damage then, actually? Uh, yeah, I would have done another D6. Another three psychic damage. Okay. We'll add that in there. Because that's an automatic thing. It's not something you have to state. Uh, so that one also goes to grapple you, Jofar. Mm. Okay. Uh, 16. All right. So it, you, you're able to get push this one away somehow, uh, and it's gonna use another attempt to try and grapple you. Okay. Oh, uh, that time, five. Okay, uh, you got a 16. So this one grapples you, and now together, these two are carrying you, and they move you another 15 feet away. Okay. This is just grocery shopping for them. <laughs> as long as they're not using a plastic bag, they don't have to pay that 10 cents. And then, uh, and then, uh, Sharp does a, or not. Does a 17 or a 12 hit you? Nope. 18 you need. Okay. So uh, around you, you, you hear two thwacks <coughs> and you look at your feet and you see some broken crossbow bolts. Solana, you're up. Uh, sharp on deck, Joe Fire in the hole. Can I make it to Joe Far from where I am? Uh, I'd be about 40 feet away at this point. It well, I can move 40 feet. So you would be able to just barely get to Jofar, but yes. Okay, I'm going to run up there, uh, spend a key point, and I'm going to attack the first one who grabbed Jafar and grappled him. And let's see, does a 18 hit. Yes. Okay. That's uh, four and four and three bludgeoning, so seven bludgeoning. And he has to make a strength saving throw of 12 or be pushed 15 feet back. He fails. Okay. So he gets pushed 15 feet away from Jafar. <laughs> okay. So that then breaks I, one of the grapples. Then I go to the other guy who's gotten grappled, and I do a roundhouse kick on him. That's a, uh, oh, a 20 not natural to hit. Okay. And that's uh, six damage, and again, a DC 12 strength check.
That's a fail. And he gets pushed 15 back, feet back as well. So at this point in the internal monologue, I would have to be thinking, I was going to yell at Joe Farr, telling him to always protect the kids. But then the kids <laughs> wind up saving Joe Farr's ass. Um, <laughs> so then uh, you still have to make an attack, though, because you're, you're using your key to do your flurry yep. of blows. But exactly. you, so I have a dot. I have a dots as well for ranged attack abilities. Okay. Yep. I grab one of my dots and I go for the uh, one who grabbed him the first time and I throw it at him. Okay. Uh, that's a nine. I don't think that's gonna hit. No, nope. that's a mess. <laughs> I was always better with my fists. And that's gonna do it for me. Uh. All right. So then, that was Solana. Sharp, you're up. Joe Far on deck. How uh, far am I from the nearest of these two now? There was a lot feet. of pushing 15 feet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was worried about, but I, I had to save Jafar. I couldn't let him die. Because <laughs> the truth is. Not Jafar, it's Joe Far. Joe Far. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been watching too much of Landon on Pornhub. Um, Wait, what? No, don't. I don't need to know. All right. So I will, uh, right, that's only verbal. So I am going to move towards one of these two, towards the one I previously hit, mm -hmm. uh, and proceed to cast Psychic Blast, which is entirely verbal. So okay. he has to make uh, an intelligence saving throw. DC 13. Uh, I, I, I even gave him disadvantage because I, I don't think that they're equipped, but even with that, he made it. Okay, he's fine then. But this wave of energy sort of shoots out for me as I cast this spell. Unfortunately, it passes over him harmlessly. Maybe he's not as intelligent I enough to actually recognize okay. it. <laughs> so I am just otherwise marching directly towards him, so I get within 15 feet. Okay. Joe Fire, you're up. Okay. Let's see. So these two guys are 15 feet away from me? Yes. As they tried to grab and run off with me. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll just go up to one of them and attack again. Okay. With the hammer, 13. Hits. That's three bludgeoning damage. All right. And that's an eight. That misses. Uh, that one looks like he's ready to to come back right at you with vengeance. Uh, and so his first attack is a natural 20. Uh, he has that, that cartoon thing where you just turn into a, like a pork chop in front of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, does does an 11 hit you? No. Okay, so it did not confirm, but it still does max damage, which is 8 bludgeoning damage. Okay. All right. And then uh, his second attack is a 23, the one away from an actual 20. Mm. <laughs> oh. So that's uh, an additional... He rolled max damage on it, so eight damage. <laughs> eight damage? <laughs> yeah. All right. So about TPKs. Yeah. How, how are you doing, Joe, Joe Farr? I'm not into vitality yet. <laughs> okay. We'll see if we can change that. Yeah, but you, you've got to be at, you've got to be at, I am too old for this shit level. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the other one, because... 
as as uh, Sharp uh, rightly mentioned, you're just looking like a pork chop to them. Uh, goes up to you and and attacks. Uh, Seventeen. Yeah, that's this is. That's a uh, oh. four damage. Wait, is he where is he attacking Joe Far or? Me? Oh, Joe Far. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so Sharp, you mentioned that Joe Far looks like a pork chop, so he's going after Joe Far. So how many? How many? So that was four bludgeoning. Okay. Yep. That puts me at zero. Okay. No! So you're at you're in vitality points now. Uh, and then his second attack is also four, uh, seventeen. Okay. And then so another uh, five bludgeoning. <clears throat> Okay, uh, vitality is what, 10? Uh, do you have any hit points. constitution bonus? Uh, plus two. So you have 12 vitality points. Okay, so I'm at seven vitality. Uh, and then... Crossbow vault to the neck. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Solana, does yep. a 16 or an 11 hit you? 16 hits. Okay. Uh, you take a crossbow bolt, bow, bolt to the neck, potentially, <laughs> uh, with, with nine piercing damage. I deflect it for seven plus... Uh, hold on. I'm completely lost from there. Where the fuck am I? Uh, seven plus six, so thirteen deflected. Okay. Uh, so then, did you want to use a Kai point to shoot it at someone? I'm out of key oh. points. Uh, okay. <laughs> right at Joe Far. <laughs> sometimes, you just, sometimes you just gotta put the dog down. Damn. All right, uh, Solana, you're up. Sharp on deck, Joe Far in the hole. Which one looks the worst of the two guys by Joe Far? Mm, they're both relatively in the same boat. Well, I ain't got a choice. I'm just going to run up to one of them and start wailing on his ass. <laughs> uh, okay. First attack is a... That's not horrendous. That's um, 15. It hits. Okay. That is, oh boy, uh, five bludgeoning damage. Okay. Joe Far, no! And then bonus action, I'm going to attack again for a uh, 16 to hit. That hits. And that's another five bludgeoning damage. Okay. And that's all I can do. All right, Sharp, you're up. Joe Far on deck. So I am going to uh, follow the one who I was just attacking over. Okay. And attack with my longsword. That's a 25. That hits. 11 points of slashing damage. Uh, okay. Uh, you slice him through his chest, opening a huge gouge that uh, a burst of blood uh, splashes you and Joe Far, and, and he falls back to the ground. Anything else? Nope, that's me. Okay. Uh, Joe Far, you're up. Oh, boy. So is there one right on me? Uh, there's still one on you, yes. So I have a uh, disadvantage if I attack, right? Because dispirited? Yes. Okay. But to cast a spell, does he get an attack of opportunity? No, but if the spell is... Uh, yeah. The spell he would have advantage on his any saving throw, and you would still have disadvantage on any attack roll. So, if I was to use 
So if I use cure wounds on myself, that would be just vitality points, right? Uh, you would start with your vitality points, yes. Okay. And if I was to use okay. good berry, then I could create, what, 10 berries in one action, and then I'd have to take another action to actually use them? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, you can also uh, disengage and get away from him if you wanted to. Hmm. Yeah, let me do that. I'll do that as an action, and then we still have action one action point, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. I hope I don't roll crappy. Oh, three... Let's see. All right, I get four HP back. So four vitality back, almost at max. Cool. All right, so you have gotten out of that situation. Uh, so now uh, it's the Reaver's turn. Uh, so it's it's gonna shove you, uh, Solana. So give me an athletics or acrobatics. Okay, that's a that's not terrible. Um, Twenty one. Okay, so you make it, uh, and and then he's gonna try again. Okay, that's even better. That's a 23. Okay, so you make it. So uh, he tries to shove you twice. You uh, dodge out of the way. Uh, and then he uh, tries to take off running. So you get an attack of opportunity if you want. Um, I could attack him or I could get hit by a crossbow bolt. Let's see. Uh... We just wanted to question these guys, right? I mean, you oh, got yeah. one bleeding out and you got one unconscious. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we already have one. There's no reason to go ahead and attack this guy then if he's running. They're technically not our enemies. Yeah, I'm going to let him go for now. Okay. Uh, so... You're you making it clear that you're not going to chase? Yeah, I'm not going to chase okay. him down. So he runs away, and uh, there are no crossbow bolts coming your way either. <laughs> I think we entered their territory. What happens if he comes back with friends? <laughs> Well, then the person with the crossbow bolt would go ahead and tell them ahead of time. <laughs> oh, sorry. So maybe I was uh, presumptuous then. Uh, Sharp or Jofar, did you want to give chase? I was going to shoot at him with my longbow. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, and then Sharp, what were you going to do? Were you going to try and give chase or do, do anything? Uh, how far away was he from me after he moved? Uh, 30 feet. Then, yeah, I probably would try to hit him with a psychic blast as he runs. Okay. Uh, so, uh, go ahead and do that. So he makes a DC 13 intelligence save. Fails. He takes five psychic damage and suffers a D4 penalty next round to uh, his next saving throw. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> uh, all right. And then, so with that, what, is, what does it look like when you use that ability? Uh, it's entirely verbal. So I sort of imagine that as I speak the words, it, it almost looks like a ripple comes through the air, like from my mouth, but expands a bit and then like wraps around the creature's head. 
okay. and just sort of but sometimes you know just passes like right through it and completely misses mm -hmm. but in this case it would have sort of enveloped his head in a sort of shimmering wave like a wave of heat where you see the air shimmering all right and then um joe far you were going to try and hit him with your longbow yeah so you're you're dropping your dagger and you're yeah well yeah my uh, my light hammer Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Uh, 14. The hits? And that would be 9 damage. It's a D8, right? Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah, 9. Now it's max damage, so 9. So you hit him right in the shoulder blade, uh, causing him to spin about, and, and he falls down. And then with that... Uh, Joe Farr, you take uh, a crossbow bolt, because uh, I assume a 21 Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you take a crossbow bolt, uh, <laughs> dealing, dealing eight piercing damage. Whoa. All right. Oh, oh that would have been it. Oh, my attack would have been at disadvantage. I for completely forgot. Oh. Let's see if that actually would happen then. Uh, yeah, eight would have missed. Yeah, so so he's still running actually, uh, but because you clearly shot at him, the bolt would still come at you. Oh, okay, nice. Um, so, uh, so yes, yeah, so you got eight damage from the the, the crossbow bolt, uh, Joe Far. He is still up. Uh, Solana or Sharp, did you want to give chase? Uh, I'm going to take out my healer's kit and help uh, Joe Far. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to give chase. I am going to, you know, based on wherever these crossbow bolts are sort of kind of coming from, stand in front of Joe Far. Okay. So that uh, at least he has a little bit of cover from me. Do you want to do uh, a search? action yeah. to try and see where it's coming from yeah next round when i get an action i would uh try to identify where it's coming from yeah uh so uh the reaver gets farther away uh and then uh the the hidden reaver would probably release one more uh crossbow bolt at the lot of you. Um, Come at me, bro. Just to kind of make sure that you guys are, uh, that the out that the friend is able to get away. Uh, so then, uh, I'm gonna give, Joe Farr, uh, I'm gonna give you uh, half cover. So okay. that's, I think, a plus five, uh, because I randomly rolled, and you're you're the one that the guy is targeting. Yeah. Uh, so so sharp, you're watching, so you'll get an advantage on your search action to see where it's coming from. Uh, but uh, the first one is a ten, which I assume misses. Yep. And then a fifteen. I got uh, plus five, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that yeah that misses. <laughs> okay. Um. So so then yeah the the crossbow bolts just kind of fly by you guys. Sharp, you can go ahead and give me uh, an investigation check. That's a twenty-two. Yeah, you see. Uh, that there's uh, in in one of the buildings that is has kind of a, a shattered roof. Uh, you see a, a crossbow bolt perched on uh, what used to be the the ledge of a window, uh, and uh, the 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 reaver. But af after the that those two um, shots that he took you see that the crossbow bolt is being pulled back and that the the reaver is running into the rubble. 
probably not worth running them down and <laughs> getting killed in these ruins. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna back up, uh, check to see what Solana is doing, uh, and then I will <coughs> go over and try to see if I can save the life of the reaver that I dropped. I'm working on saving Joe Far at the moment with my healer's kit. I need to roll a d6, I believe. What will that do? Uh, that will restore your vitality points. Let's let's see, because I think I have a house rule about the healer's kit. You do. You do. You have a lot of house rules about it. <laughs> uh, if you are not proficient in the medicine skill, you can still use the healer's kit in the following ways. As an action, you can spend one use of the healer's kit to attend to a creature and restore 1d6 plus 4 hit points to it, plus additional hit points equal to the creature's maximum hit die. And uh, this is only for vitality points, as it has no effect on a creature who has all their vitality points. And you can't regen health from it. Okay. Uh, and are you proficient in medicine or not? I am not. Okay. So then... Uh, That's all yeah, I can you do. Can... I can't do any of the healing stuff. <laughs> okay. But you can help restore his vitality points. So go ahead and roll that d6. That is actually a five plus uh, four, so nine, plus the number of hit die he has. So, Jofar, you have three <laughs> hit dice. Uh, so then that's an additional three, so uh, that would be 12. Yep. So you're at full vitality points now. Okay, good. So you're still <laughs> dispirited until you get one hit point. Okay. And then also the exhaust, the level of exhaustion doesn't go away. That that sticks with you until you can heal the exhaustion, either with a long rest or with some other means. So I blow uh, some uh, blood out my nose. Yeah. Better be, better uh, run, punks. Now, <laughs> Sharp, you're trying to save the one that you slashed. Yes. Uh, what what are you using to try and save him? I also have uh, 10 uses of a healer's kit. <laughs> so as an action, I can stabilize it if it's at zero and not already dead. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can do that. Uh, use the healer's kit to, to take out the gauze and, and uh, try to stop the bleeding. Uh, it's, it's a pretty deep wound. The, you're able to get the bleeding to stop, but um, unless he gets like significant medical treatment or some kind of magical healing, he's likely to, to eventually die from infection. But that's, that's neither here nor there for the time being you've saved his life. So. So I will drag the other unconscious <laughs> one over to this one that I just saved rather than vice versa, risk reopening <laughs> the wound. Okay. Uh, although I guess I might want to like move both of them over to where we have at least some cover <laughs> so yeah. that when all their friends come back. <laughs> um, there's lots of rubble here, so it's it wouldn't be hard for you to find uh, something that would give you uh, relatively decent cover. There's probably within 15 feet a standing wall that you can try and hide behind. Um, or, or even like uh, a mostly intact but still broken dwelling or structure that you can go into. Um, yeah, somewhere where we can still, if we need to, see out mm -hmm. uh, if we hear anything out there. Okay, so there's, there's one place the door is kind of off the hinges. It's still attached to the frame, but just barely. Uh, you're able to, to go in there. It's uh, three, three standing walls, uh, and then there's a massive hole in one of the walls. Uh, the roof is caved in. Uh, there's w what furniture that still remains in there is broken and shattered to pieces for the most part. And there's lots of cobwebs uh, and the smell of mildew, but but you can go in there and you'd have a pretty decent view of the area outside because not only do you have that hole in one wall, but there's also a few broken windows as well. 
you two are smarter than me. You investigate them and see what's on them. I'll keep a lookout. Yeah, so first I will, uh, I'm going to dismiss my longsword and then summon a magical heavy crossbow instead, in case I need it. Uh, and then I'm going to search these two. Okay. Uh, before we go there, uh, can we take uh, five minutes? Yeah, sure. Yep, sure. Oh my god, I have no idea how to play a monk. It's my first time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
invent doing well. Whatever. I'm doing well, though. Oh, God. Listen, I play fighters and I play rogues, and that's it. You guys are the first time I've ever played a 5th edition game where I'm not one of those two. It's good to get out of your comfort zone. I do, but I enjoy fighters so much. They're great. Especially when they finally make the brute an actual subclass I can pick so we don't have shit champions anymore. <laughs> have you looked at my version of the champion? I think you'd enjoy it. I should take a look. Let me take a look here. Uh, homebrew material, there we are. You mean he's not horrendously awful? Oh my god. I think the fighter's actually pretty effective. It's just designed to be simple. Well, that's yeah. the problem with the champion, is that it should be better at being an actual fighter as opposed to, oh, you're going to have to wait until level what is it, 17 to be able to get an 18 or 24 crit. <laughs> Whereas yeah. Tony, Tony played a bar, uh, champion fighter and he dominated at everything in that combat-wise in that game. 19 or 20 is really nothing to be sneezed at. <laughs> True. I mean, you are a fighter at the end of the day, though, which helps a lot. Yeah. Um my version i give a slight damage bump as well to in addition to the critical threat range just because that relies so much on chance so yeah but uh anyways so you guys are tony was dominating particularly after level 11 because he was getting three attacks per round he was yeah. like, critting every time he <laughs> made three attacks <laughs> At least, at least once, it seemed. <laughs> and we just yeah. need to fix two weapon fighting, so we get six attacks instead of just an extra one, and suddenly it's really good. <laughs> you should check out my two weapon fighting rules as well. But <laughs> oh God, I'll take a look at it later. <laughs> uh, anyways, you guys are in this uh, broken building with these two reavers, one unconscious, the other one... Uh, having their wounds kind of bandaged and stopped up for the time being. Uh, Sharp, you have your crossbow out and Solana is uh, doing some uh, kind of keeping lookout. Yep. Uh, so you guys asked oh. what you find on them. So I mean, I would go to the trouble of drawing the string on my crossbow back, just in case. <laughs> don't want to... <laughs> when they come to attack us, get the winch out. Uh, all right, let me see. I mean, in particular, I don't really expect them to have loot. If they do, I would probably take that. But uh, I do want to see if they have our mystery bowl, big well, the two hands tattoos. Yeah. Yep. Um. They don't, they don't have that tattoo, uh, but they do have other tattoos. Um, so uh, they have, their tattoo kind of looks like, uh, actually I'll draw it. On one of their bodies, you find a spray paint can that was used to make graffiti. Does Sohana have sleight of hand? You could always like slip a paintbrush in, like a waistband. I really wish I did. It kind of looks like this. You guys see that? Uh. Is it a cobra? With a brain for the head instead? Uh, it's not too far off from that. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have any significance. It, it, it does kind of look like a coiled snake with a giant head or um, 
and one of them has this tattoo on the heel of their foot. Uh, the other one that got slashed uh, has it on his neck. Mm -hmm. So does the head look like the hood of a cobra or does it look like a brain? Uh, neither. It just kind of looks like, uh, here, let me fill it in a little bit more. It's just, it's just kind of filled in really dark. Like it's, it's, it's actually solid, that color. I see. So it's, it's all just a solid cut black. I could have done better. Here, I'll do this so it kind of even is looks more like highlighted. Looks like they had a cobra tattoo and then decided to like change their mind and scribbled over the top <laughs> half of it. They joined a different game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. The gangs join each other in different ways. <laughs> Just change your tattoo a bit. The most powerful gangs are the ones with the most intricate mesh together. Why's it gotta be black? Because that's the easiest ink to come by in this these here parts. So does this uh this mean anything to you, Solana? Let me see. Does it mean anything to me, DM? <laughs> Uh, it wouldn't be anything that you've recognized from your time in the COGS or anything. Never likely, seen it before. Likely it's endemic to this tribe uh, or this group of Reavers. <laughs> nope, haven't a clue. Uh, in terms of uh, possessions, outside of their clubs and cudgels and what they're wearing. They don't appear to have too much else. Uh, one of them has a uh, kind of a, a small little pouch uh, that's full of teeth. Is the pouch human skin? No, it doesn't appear to be human skin. <laughs> Are the teeth, the teeth. maintained? Are they cleaned? All that stuff? Oh no, they're, I, some of them still have bits of flesh attached to the root. Mm. So it's probably not heavily religious based then, because otherwise they give a damn about it. <laughs> so yeah, I would leave, he can keep his bag of teeth. I don't know of any use for that. <laughs> for just be dickish to steal his bag of teeth. <laughs> Are they his teeth? Yeah, does he have any teeth? Uh, mu much like the body of the Reaver that you saw up in the Kaelis's place, the, the teeth that they do have are incredibly rotted. Um, even opening his mouth, you get a, one of their mouths. It's it's a smell that's like overpowering. Do these so teeth should, look uh... similar to those teeth in his mouth? No. Okay. I assume they're teeth from his victims. But, they could uh... be their currency. Possibly. I assumed when I saw it that it was probably uh, people that he's keeping trophies from. And they can't eat the teeth, so why not? What's a better possible souvenir of each kill than a tooth? It's small and portable and inedible. But we might as well, uh, I don't know if we're going to get a lot of information from these two, but we might as well settle in. Wait for one of them to wake up, see if they can even speak. Does it, do they look like they're, are there any sort of obvious wounds where it looked like they, you know, tried to take a knife to their larynx or something? <laughs> no, nothing like that. Okay. I mean, much look? like the other one, it does appear like there's some, some scarring that appears to be intentional and ritual. 
uh, uh, but they also both have a number of wounds that seem to have been pretty significant but have healed over time, uh, which is likely because of the way that they live. Uh, and also by looking at them, if you had to guess, uh, despite how rough both of them look, they're probably not more than 20. Do they look like humans, orcs, uh, now that we can see them closer, elves? Uh, one seems to have some orcish features to him. His green, his, his uh, skin is a, a little bit of a greener tint. And, and one, of, one of those teeth that seems to have survived but is rotten and broken seems to be a, a, a pronounced canine tooth. Uh, the, the other one, it's hard to say, but more human features than not human. Mm -hmm. Both I male, I take it? Yes. Okay. I say we settle in, wait for one of these two to wake up, and in the meantime, keep a lookout to see if any of their friends come back. I'm going to cast Goodberry and consume eight and keep two on me. Okay. Uh, the building we're in, how good of a view does it have around anything? Do we have any blind spots or anything? Uh, yeah, but so um, there is one wall where you would have a blind spot, but because of the way that the rubble is uh, and because the roof is caved in, you could potentially attempt to climb uh, to get a better view, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of have a, a perch from the roof that you could see. Uh, but if you were to do that, well, location you, you also, you all, well, you also know that the, while the building seems to be pretty firm now, you don't know if, if doing that climb would maybe disturb any part of it. Uh, and then also, um, there's not an easy way for you to kind of hide yourself while you're looking from up there either. Mm -hmm. In that case, I'll settle in as best I can and keep a lookout from where I can. Okay. So seeing um, as it's probably going to take like an hour at least for one of these two to wake back up, maybe more, could we get a long rest or short rest in? You guys can get a short rest in, yeah. Uh, so with a short rest, if you guys wanted to spend any hit dice, you could do that as well. Oh, God, yes. And I need a long rest to get rid of exhaustion, right? <laughs> yes, you do. To spend two hit die for 10 HP recovered. And then, so I, and I think uh, all of you guys are primarily short rest classes. Um. So also, um, uh, Joe Farr, uh, you're a third level ranger, right? Right. So you'd only have one spell slot. I thought I had two. You have two. You have three spells known, but one one spell slot. Oh, apparently I'm not using good berry then. Um, and then you also have your uh, your domain spell from being a hunter as well. But I mean, as part of a, you are taking a short rest, so your spell slot would recover if you want to use it at the end of your short rest to, to cast good berry. Uh, does anyone have the medicine skill among us? I just, I'll just use hit dice then. Okay. Because we have at least two healers kits, so if anyone had the medicine skill, you could regain health that way. I think that was Varus. I don't even know if Varus had it. <laughs> 
yeah, Varys had it, and I had it originally, but then I changed it to perception instead. Uh, because I wasn't yeah, using I... medicine at all. <laughs> well, somebody has to have some perception. He actually <laughs> did not have uh, proficiency in medicine. Oh, shit, so that no was... one has proficiency in medicine. Yeah. That was my recollection that nobody had proficiency in it. Yep. <laughs> okay. But we have a uh, ranger to heal us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ranger is like an emergency backup bar healing wise. Since we can all take the prodigy feet next level, we should all take the prodigy feet and get proficiency in medicine and all carry healers kits just in case. <laughs> Um, so you guys wait about an hour, uh, during that, so everybody give me, so who is actively, like, looking out? Uh, I am. I probably would be too. Joe Farr, <coughs> what are you doing with this time? Um, I mean, actually, I probably would delegate, I don't know if Joe Farr is, like, I'm half blind, and I would, I am <laughs> probably uh not self-aware enough to know that but i would know that like you two might be keener eyed than me i have a minus one to my perception skill and i'm at disadvantage uh, i'll keep an eye that's out that's true that's true you're you're bleary eyed so <laughs> yeah. all right so whoever's on lookout give me a perception check uh, that oh Jesus Christ! Uh, that is nineteen. I got a five. <laughs> now I spend the hour, by the way, partially having an argument with somebody you can't see about. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like from one side of the argument, like I'm arguing with uh, my invisible wife, saying I didn't wink. At him, he winked at me. <laughs> um, Solana, um, close to probably about the forty-five minute mark, uh, you notice uh, in the distance uh, some uh, of the figures kind of rummaging through the rubble uh, about probably about 100 meters away from you. Uh, so, but they don't seem to notice you and eventually they kind of move on. They do seem to be uh, fairly similar in how they appear to the, the ones that you have in your, uh, in, in this uh, little bunk of yours, but they, they, move on unless you guys try to interact with them. It, How many do I see? Uh, it looks like you notice one, then you, you see another one in a slightly different place, and then you see another one <laughs> in a slightly different place. So there's three of them that you notice. Do I happen to recognize the one we sent running? No. No, okay. I go ahead and I turn and say, shh, quiet. There appear to be three of them rummaging through the rubble about 100 meters away. They don't look hostile. So, a few minutes go by and they move on. They don't seem to notice you. Uh, conveniently, just as uh, they move on, one of the the, the one that Solana knocked out starts uh, coming to a little bit. So what time of day is it now? It'd be late afternoon, verging on twilight. So, but I will uh, back up from the wall and crawl over to that one. Uh, so yes. he. Oh, Time to sorry. wake up, sweetheart. 
Uh, you understand me? You you understand common? So he kind of shakes his head and then he looks at you and then he kind of has this like glare, like. I look at him and make a fist. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Just calm down there. If we wanted you dead, you'd be dead. We're just looking for a little information about you and your clients here. I don't think our chances of communication are all that high. Well, maybe he just speaks Elvish. Uh, bonjour, comment allez-vous? Uh, is this can... one the or is this one the orcish one or the other one? Uh, no, this is the other one. Uh, so I would try goblin just to see. I don't know what they speak. <laughs> a bunch of people who are messed up and take other people's teeth, so probably Italian. Click. Speak gob goblin. Okay. Goblin so, any better? Uh, you yeah. a, as your mid sentence in goblin. Uh, that's where he he seems to have grabbed a piece of rubble and is about to do something with it. And so that's why I said click. We kind of pause frame. Uh, each of you have an opportunity to do something that is a very quick reaction to this. Uh, I'm going to try to hit him with the butt of my uh, crossbow. OK. I and think then... I'm too far away from him to get into melee range. Uh, and I don't think that I actually can go ahead and throw a dart to knock the piece of rubble out of his hand. Oh, I was just going to hit him in the head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then, Joe Farr? Um, is this guy on the ground? Like, is he sitting? He's kind of laying, like, and, and kind of, he seemed to be squirming to get his back up against something. <laughs> he dropped the piece of rubble. We're fine. Uh, I would go and try to like step on his hand. Okay. Uh, so, Kurt, yours is going to resolve the quickest. So go ahead and give me an attack roll. Improvised weapon? Uh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even uh, improvised weapon is like a five. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, Joe Farr, if you had to walk over, you probably wouldn't be able to walk over quickly enough before he oh, okay, okay. did his thing. Uh, so he is going to throw it at um, Sharp because he's the one that's closest. And he rolled a 19, natural. Do you have disadvantage because it's an improvised weapon? <laughs> I think an improvised uh, weapon is minus four. <laughs> is it? No, that was a that's a three point five. Oh, He's using you know. his legendary. In, in, improvised <laughs> uh, improvised weapon. I think you just don't add your proficiency bonus to it. Is it? <laughs> I th I thought you had disadvantage, but that makes sense too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Wait, did you did you roll disadvantage for yourself? Yes, which is okay. kind of equivalent. So, okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, that would hit me. <laughs> All right. So he he would do uh, four bludgeoning damage to you, sharp, uh, and then try to use the distraction to get up and and take off. 
I'm just going to kick him then if he's going to try running. <laughs> I'm by the exit. I made it through that whole first fight unscathed. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I'm just going to go straight for a gut shot with my foot. <laughs> All right, go ahead and give me an attack roll, Solana. Uh, 14 plus 5, 19. Yeah, that's an easy hit. Yeah. Uh, and, uh... You don't even need to roll damage. You you knock him to the floor, uh, and uh, like you kicked you kicked him right in the ribs, causing him to kind of spin about uh, on one foot. And he lands with a crack on his knee as as he hits a, a rock uh, with some of, of one of the the pieces of rubble, and and he screams. Ah! Um. And, and he is grabbing his knee and looking at all of you just with absolute rage in his eyes. I walk over and I put my foot on top of his stomach and say, how many times we're gonna have to keep teaching you this lesson, old man? He spits on Solana. I am a little bit concerned that if we set him free to take care of his unconscious friend here, that they'll eat the unconscious friend. <laughs> it might be the blood drinkers and drink their blood. Well, they could be the geologists. But I'm also less than hopeful that we're going to get any better information out of his friend. We might get a little goodwill if we just uh, let him go now. But that's as much as I think we're going to get out of this. Honestly, they don't really seem like the goodwill type to me. They're not going to get us any more bad will than we already got. <laughs> that's true. It's also getting late here. We're going to start requiring light soon. Yeah, that's true, and I assume darkness is when the ghosts come out. <laughs> Maybe we can sneak around by the light of the ghosts. They mostly come out at night. <laughs> mostly. Yeah, that's a different part of Eberron, <laughs> like 30 years from now. Wait, you can talk? <laughs> he can talk! <laughs> uh... Although we should have brought like a sheet. That way we could pretend to be the ghosts and maybe scare them into cooperating. I put my cloak over my head and go, woo! Ah! <laughs> Probably less effective if they're watching you put the cloak over your head. <laughs> I could kick him again. Um, all right, so what languages do you guys speak? I speak common and goblin. Uh, common and Elvish. Common and Goblin. All right. So he begins, like, it, it just sounds like a bunch of guttural noises, but, and it doesn't sound like he's speaking Goblin, but there's one thing that he kind of says uh, a couple of times that you would guess is actually a word in Goblin. That means food. Um, uh, but it's it's the only word that you can really pick out and understand. And it, it doesn't sound like it's an actual language that he's speaking. Or if it is, it's like a mashup of, of several different languages. Quick question. Was this the guy with the teeth on him? No. No? Should we offer him the bag of teeth? Sure, why not? I will reach over and get the bag of teeth <laughs> and throw it to this guy. Uh, he kind of just looks at it strangely and then tosses it aside. Then I will like reach out and like put a hand on Jofar's chest and say, not food, not food. In Goblin. <laughs> uh, 
eventually he's kind of this guy seems to have reached his limit and he just shouts as loud as he possibly can he's just like the minute he starts trying to yell i just push down on his stomach with my foot to knock the wind out of him pick in the face Okay. Uh, Jofar kicks him in the face. No, Solanus kicked uh, him in the gut. No, no meanwhile, kick, Sharp, kick. Sharp shaked his, shook his head when he heard this and just turned and started walking out. And then you two started beating the shit out of the guy. <laughs> 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 so I like pause. Um, like I said, yeah. I don't think we're going to get much out of him. Yeah, pick in the face. Further. Probably not going to get us anything more. <laughs> But they're already punching him in the face. <laughs> I'm just trying to be peaceful about it. It's like, oh, I'll just go ahead and slowly push the wind out of him so he can't keep yelling. No, we're going to kick him in the fucking face. Um, at that point, uh, each of you hears uh, some commotion from outside. Uh, so... If, if you guys want to take to a run. peek. <laughs> yeah, time to go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm by the door because I started to walk out. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> I will peer around the edge of the door. Uh, so, uh, you notice uh, three reavers in the distance uh, cautiously keeping to the, the shadows uh, to the best of their ability, they're really bad at it. Uh, but, but trying to, um, avoid, uh, being seen as they're clearly now moving in the direction of the, this little place that you've set up camp. Yeah. So some sort of gag perhaps next time, although that's just going to make it that much harder to get them to talk, but we need to go now. Unless we want to fight three more, get two more hostages, let one more run away. Are you saying we're getting involved in the slave trade? <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea, to be honest, if we do need the money, but... Are we going? Yeah. Now follow you. So, uh, I'm not actually trying to sneak. I'm not any good at it anyway in this armor. So, I'm just going to start jogging away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, as, as you leave, uh, you can kind of hear uh, behind you the the one that was awake tries to to kind of stand but you can hear him fall back down again uh because it seems whatever it is that he fell upon when solana first kicked him uh seems to probably have injured his knee um and he begins shouting once more uh the uh as as you guys are are heading out, you can see the other reavers. Um, they're they're more focused on the house than on you, although they do see you, uh, and they kind of point, but they're uh, going to the house where they they heard the the screams. Uh, so you guys are able to get some distance between you guys. It doesn't seem like they're trying to follow you um and so i'm thinking we lost our goodwill when he broke his knee <laughs> we lost our goodwill when they attacked us <laughs> well do, do we, we know going? where the um blackstone church is yeah so I would suggest um, we go there. What's the Blackstone Church? Where Faella is, Priestess oh. Faella. 
there's got to be like a lot of other approaches to this place that we haven't tried yet. <laughs> There's got to be a back door. We just need to find the back door. Well, this maybe the maybe the priestess knows. Yeah, I sincerely doubt she's going to be all that helpful. If you want to be converted into her cult, I'm sure she'll be great. <laughs> Is she a cannibal? Uh, you, you know, honestly, I can't say one way or another. How does she feel about teeth? <laughs> Fine. Let's go talk to Faella. But I will take your lives before I allow you to join her church. So you're aware of that now. So you know her? <clears throat> Not even slightly, but I know the Church of the Silver Flame. Nothing good ever came out of Thrain. <laughs> Okay. So, um, as you guys begin heading towards the Blackstone Church, uh, the, uh, the area slowly gets a little bit better, uh, in the reverse of what you experienced heading deeper into Fallen. Um, so, uh, you 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 begin you see Blackstone Church ahead of you, uh, and most temples of the Silver Flame are typically built to not just as churches but to serve as fortresses, and Blackstone Church is no exception. There are uh, a few nicks in the walls. Well, not just a few. There's more than uh, uh, a few nicks in the the thick walls of the church. Um, as it has clearly not just withstood the, uh, the destruction of Fallen, but also uh, possibly even was um, the, the center of uh, the occasional riot. <clears throat> uh, but overall, it's still in pretty excellent condition, at least from the outside. Uh, you guys are able to, to enter the church. Uh, the doors are open, uh, but within it is dark and empty. Uh, it was once uh, doubtless able to hold hundreds of parishioners with offerings and faith, but all of those things were stripped away long ago uh, and pillaged. And now it's, it's kind of just filled with dust and shadows. Uh, but a, you do see uh, in towards the back uh, where there is a, a few candles lit, uh, you see a figure in plain gray, gray robes uh, and uh, <clears throat> she notices you and, and carries one of the candles with her uh, as she comes forward, more of her is revealed within the, the small amount of light that she's holding, revealing herself to be a half-elf uh, with her robes uh, being of a fashion that demonstrates that she's a friar of the silver flame. There's a silver arrowhead that glitters on a chain around her throat. Uh, and though she she appears far younger than you would expect uh and and despite the fact that she's alone in this place that seems so desolate uh and was once something that was so central to the the provision of faith in its current condition it doesn't seem like it could have ever provided that but still she radiates an aura of peace and comfort uh, bitch. <laughs> uh, and so she says, uh, she welcomes each of you and says, uh, hello, I'm Kayla. Is there 
anything that I might be able to, to help you with. We want to know about these reavers. They're trouble. They're gangs of them roaming around. I think they're geologists or something. Found one with some teeth. Could be anti-dentite or maybe he's a fallen dentist or something. Anyway, they're trouble. Beat us. Beat us up. Beat me up pretty bad. What do you know about? Oh, my. Yes, I, I can see some of the bruising that's beginning to form around some of your injuries. Uh, yeah, as uh, as fun as it is to always t talk to Joe, uh, there's a, a few more pointed questions I would ask. We are interested in the Reavers. We, uh, <laughs> we're told that you might be a good resource for us from the person who hired us, whose name I'm forgetting. Kale. You're not a cannibal, are you? Yeah. Kayla tells. Heard the cannibals what kind too. Of question is that? No. Straightforward I'm question. Not, I'm not a cannibal. His mother I dropped am. him on his head when he was a kid, so that explains the random questions. He learned that the Reavers are cannibals, and therefore concludes everyone down here must be cannibals. He saw a sign was vandalized, and concludes everyone must have been involved in the vandalism of the sign. It's just, that's is how there he any is. Graffiti? Is there any graffiti in this church? None that you can see. Was there okay. any nearby? Outside the church? <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think Joe's on the right track. <laughs> right. Think about it, Joe. This is the one place untouched by all that graffiti outside. <laughs> the lair of the graffiti artist, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Won't, wouldn't soil her own nest. <laughs> you are uh, an odd bunch, but certainly the flame has brought you here for a reason. Hopefully I can shed some light on what it is that you need and offer some assistance. Oh, I get it. Yep. Flame, shed some light. Good. I like it. Yes. Well... You've asked about the Reavers. Yeah, we think there may be some cult activity that's involving the Reavers, something called the Wisdom of the Past. They have been collecting chunks of a magical statue that we think they're trying to rebuild. But they're being led by somebody who's a lot smarter and a lot better connected than a normal Reaver, somebody who's able to get to the upper districts of Sharn and steal things right out of people's mansions there, then escape and bring it back down here. Gangs of punks. Unfortunately, we can't get anywhere near them to figure out where they might be rebuilding this statue or where the stolen object might be. Well, you certainly seem to be a man of intellect and reason. Unfortunately, this is not a reasonable situation, nor are these rational creatures that you're dealing with, these reavers. They, as you have come to experience they're very dangerous and they're more like animals than people. I've spent much time wondering about what it is that drives them and how it came to be. I've spent much time in, in prayer and also gathering information from those that I help. Uh, but Have you heard anything about a change in their behavior? Because, at least according to our employer, a group of them managed to break in to her mansion in the upper <laughs> levels of the city, target a particular object, sneak through, only one of them managing to get killed in the meantime, and then vanish again. That just doesn't strike me as the M.O. of the people who attacked us today. Yes, well, the... What I can gather is that these Reavers, they're not just mortal men, they're actually possessed. I believe that angry spirits, restless from the time when the tower fell, have taken residence within them and about them. Of course, I, I haven't seen any proof directly of this, but I've heard the stories of the Korlak Hall and, and many of the people who have encountered the Reavers. I think that 
their ancestors were simply driven mad by the disaster. Although, with what you're saying, it's hard to imagine one of them leaving the district. They rarely come out of their territory around the Corlec Hall. And when they do, they usually fight. The first thing that they see or are, are scavenging for something. Did you notice any details about the one that made it all the way up to Skyway, did you say? I, I will use minor illusion again to recreate the image of his tattoo. He had this marking on him. Hmm. Yes, well, I'm, I'm glad that you are able to provide me with that detail. There's at least half a dozen of the tribes out there. Uh, that particular marking identifies the thief as being a member of the Stone Keepers. Goddamn geologists. <clears throat> uh, can you tell me anything else about the, the reaver that was part of these the bandits that stole whatever it is that they did from your employer? Well, he claimed to be guided by something called the wisdom of the past, and he was after a fragment of a magical statue, a hand. They seemed to think it was very important that they reassemble this statue. Yes, well, I, I, I've heard some rumors that they seem to be scavenging for something very particular. <clears throat> Can't imagine why they would want to travel so far for something like this, but with the stone keepers, I've, I've seen one or two of them before. They certainly do make their home at Corlick Hall. These reavers in particular are a little bit more sophisticated than the others. Some of them may actually be able to, to speak to some degree. And, and I have, you know, they are, they are called stone keepers because they have been seen scavenging stones, but I wasn't aware that there was any particular pattern or reasoning behind what it is that they they take. I suppose it could have something to do with the statue that you've mentioned. What about that other symbol? That that symbol, as I mentioned, is the mark that the stone keepers place upon them. What no, other sharp. symbol? Sharp. The other symbol that the other one had didn't didn't look like the other one, did it? It was different. Oh, he means of the people who attacked us today. And All right. I'll Let me guess. Cast, they're the blood drinkers. I'll cast minor image of that snake-like symbol, the black blob. Hmm. I haven't seen that one before. Uh, I've I've not had much direct contact with the Reavers. They, you get out they much? are a dangerous lot. Well, sure, I get out. I I do what work I can within this community. It is difficult work, but my mission has brought me here and I do what I can to alleviate the suffering of those who call this place home. Well, it seems to me we're going to have to go back into Corlac Hall. Out of curiosity, what exactly was Corlac Hall before the fall? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure. <coughs> I believe it was, um, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Thank you. It is, it, I do, I do know, uh, that it is built 
very sturdy, almost almost like a fortress. What can you tell us about the supposed <laughs> ghosts that haunt the place? Well, as as I said before, I think that if there are indeed ghosts that have taken residence there, they are likely the the angry, rageful spirits of their ancestors who were killed in the devastation of the fall. It, it was a terrible time. Not only were people killed immediately, but the rubble was such that many suffered for hours or even days and buried beneath so, so much concrete and glass. Many of them died slowly and painfully. Corlick Hall was the epicenter. The, the tower, the spire of it actually is said to have pierced directly into the heart of Corlick Hall, like some kind of massive bolt from the heavens. Almost as though something drew it towards the hall, like it was the target of the collapse. I couldn't say. Uh, the, the divine presence of the flame does act in mysterious ways, and there are certainly other powers that be that might have wished for such an act, but I, anything I offer would be pure speculation at best. Mm -hmm. Do you know of any uh, relatively easy ways to get into Corlac Hall? Because the way we took was pretty well guarded. Guarded? There at least were reavers there to intercept us. <laughs> one of which had a crossbow and was firing from a distance. So clearly they had laid out some sort of ambush. And they have some advanced degree of intelligence to operate advanced machinery such as a crossbow and maintain it. And somebody bought them a crossbow and bolts. <laughs> mm, I'm, I'm not sure about that. The, the Reavers, that area is certainly their hunting ground. And They've been known to be cannibals, so they may have simply been acting on their baser instincts as, as to the, their use of a crossbow. I've never heard of them employing such advanced tactics, but I don't think that anybody provided it to them or that they bought it. More likely, it was scavenged from either somebody that they had killed or was happened to be found within the wreckage. Well, um, I turn to my companions now. Still not necessarily seeing how these guys suddenly grew bright enough to pull off a robbery. <clears throat> it might be tied in with the fact that one of them was using a crossbow, but so far... <laughs> I do buy that it's not a lot of evidence that one of them had a crossbow. Maybe we can find uh, some more obscure way to get to Corlac Hall and take a look at what's going on in there. Maybe even uh, shed some of this fancier equipment we have and disguise ourselves as Reavers now that we know what they look like. Surely our painter friend can paint up a little fake tattoo on our arms. That would be an interesting approach. I've never known anybody to attempt to disguise themselves as a reaver to enter their territory, though that may very well work. They're not the brightest. Uh, as I said before, they're barely people. Um, I yeah, could I'm not exactly... certainly... Go ahead. I, I could certainly provide a, a route that is more likely to help you avoid the, the reavers. Do you know that the is what you wish. Do you know the type of tattoo of the reavers that would be on that route? No. 
as I said before, I've not actually personally seen very many reavers. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm afraid had I been in a position to see them on multiple occasions, I would be at great risk for being one of their targets or perhaps even one of their meals. Mm -hmm. You said this place was like a fortress? Yes. So did we notice any guards or anything outside or it's just, <laughs> it was just open? I didn't actually know we were all that close to Corlac Hall as opposed to in the vicinity of Corlac Hall. It could be many miles. It's probably about 30 minute walk. You seem alone yeah. here. Well, uh, I am by myself right now, but I don't consider myself alone. Right, you got the silver flame and all that, yeah. But uh, any yes. guards or anything? Any reavers come down here? No, uh, they rarely leave their territory. Typically, if we stay away from them, they'll stay away from us. So when a reaver comes down, what do you do? Well, they haven't had an instance to come here specifically. Uh, but if they do leave their territory, uh, we do our best to defend ourselves and run or hide. The way I see it, we can either try to sneak in to Corlac Hall or our second best option is to, uh, I don't know how you get word out to the Reavers, but we could uh, get close to Reaver territory and create a little illusion of a white piece of a statue, a vaguely humanoid statue, <laughs> see if we can draw out the ones who are interested in it. They could also attack us with a huge number of people. <laughs> yeah, that could be true either way, though. <laughs> yeah. That, that may be... That may work, but I would also be cautious. If, if it is, in fact, true that they're seeking specific stones related to this statue, and if if it is correct, as I believe, that they are driven by the spirits that possess them, they may not be easily fooled by such an illusion. So, yeah, if you could tell us that uh, somewhat less dangerous route, that would be great. We'll get out of your hair. I pull out my painter's kits. While while you're here, would it, any of you like to? No, we do not wish blessing. to join your cult. I was not asking if you would like to join with the Silver Flame, though the flame is always welcoming of those who would accept it into their hearts. Yeah, they That's... killed a lot of my friends in the war. I am sorry that. Your experience with the church has been so painful. Right now, we're really just in need of a path. If one of my friends here wants to get blessed, that's fine. Oh, I'm a fighter, not a lover. I'm not really all that blessing. And what of you? And she uh, looks to Jofar. How long does this blessing take? We don't have much time. It is just a, a few words that I can offer to ensure that the light of the silver flame shines upon the path that will keep you safe. Uh, while she's doing these few words, I'm going to be taking a long rest. <laughs> um... 
So she just uh, kind of raises her hands and bows her head in prayer. Uh, and you can kind of hear her whispering. You can't really necessarily make out the words that she's saying. Uh, and then and then she stops and says, is there anything else that I might be able to offer you? You got any silver flame water or something? Uh, no, we, we do not have any blessed water. The, the few resources that we have are really more for the survival of our congregation. So, members, is that what you're saying? <laughs> I like to think that they would have Silver Flame branded water, like just <laughs> bottles. <laughs> It's like also silver flame t-shirts like all the merch <laughs> silver flame flamethrowers <laughs> the kids love it <laughs> may the flame be with you <laughs> so she uh, gives you guys the directions to Corlick Hall that will reduce the likelihood of you encountering any reavers uh, would you like so me the, to go ahead and paint uh, one of the um, symbols on each arm so it can be covered up depending on who we meet? Uh, we probably do need to discuss some of the details. Like, <laughs> I'm going to have to go drop my armor off somewhere if we're going to disguise ourselves as Reavers since last time I checked they were not wearing like full scale armor. And uh, all of our fancy weapons, I recognize that doesn't affect you, Silhana, but Joe and I probably are going to have to leave the larger weapons behind. I mean, I can summon a weapon to my hand, so it's not as big a deal for me. Well, they were using clubs and crossbows. Uh, so one I mean, had a crossbow. You so might get away with the longbow. <laughs> yeah, I don't see why not. It would actually be easier to use than a crossbow. <laughs> But not like the full normal golf bag of weapons. That probably wouldn't be good. Yeah. Uh, where's the caddy for your weapons anyway? Where'd he go? Hmm? We should probably keep some of the weapons hidden. I don't, I don't have that many, so... <laughs> I mean, I assume none of these guys were armored. Not really. Yeah. They had tattered armor. Yep. Right. You might you might like be able to get away with hide armor. Leather armor seems like it might be a little fancy for these guys. My scale's definitely out, but we could go stash it at the Blue Temple Arms and pick it up if we survive. Or you could just wear your t-shirt over your armor. I'm th I'm thinking they might see through that disguise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. They're not going to buy me and my awesome hat. I'm going to have to leave the hat behind. Maybe we could get some silver flame cloaks. Be kind of like an outreach. <laughs> uh, I think she established <laughs> that they would probably eat her as well. So. Uh, and outreach is essentially meals on wheels to them. <laughs> you know, or we could try to brave this path with all of our normal stuff and see how that goes. We can always retreat and try a different tactic if things go poorly. Mm-hmm. Uh, hearing nothing from Joe Far, and then, mm -hmm, I guess that's our plan. I mean, I don't think we're going to be able to disguise ourselves. Yeah. Oh, how yeah, hard is sticking. it to how hard is it to dress in rags and roll around in the dirt? Maybe rub some charcoal on our teeth so it looks like they're falling out of our mouths. Well, it sounds like you every morning, but for me, no. Nope. 
All right, then we'll just try sneaking in. I, I say that as like every scale of my armor starts <laughs> chinging off of every other scale of my armor, <laughs> sounding like a thousand bells are tied to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll take point. <laughs> um, okay, so you guys head off uh, following Bela's directions. Uh, and her directions are pretty good. You guys are able, I mean, you see, once in a while you'll see a reaver out in the distance, but they don't really notice you. They don't seem to be necessarily looking for you. But for the most part, you're able to avoid encountering any other reavers uh, on the way to Korlak Hall. Uh, eventually, you get there, um, and Korlak Hall is fairly unremarkable from the outside. Uh, as uh, Fela mentioned, though, it does appear to have been built very sturdy. If uh, if Blackstone Church was built like a fort, Corlick Hall was built to withstand a siege. Uh, the manor is a solid square of red granite, dist <coughs> distinguished by the Corlick uh crest that is above the door. But what is remarkable about this place is that uh, the three floors of the circular glass spire that protrude from the center of the manor. Uh, this is one of the spires of the glass tower uh, when it fell and pierced the building like a massive arrow, just as Fela described it, uh, which has caused most of the one half of the hall to, to be completely in ruin, but remaining fairly intact for the rest of it. Uh, the vast front doors of Colric Hall fell from their hinges decades ago. Uh, and you can look and you see beyond them appears to be a long entry hall. The walls are bare. Uh, the carpeting is stained and rotting. You don't even want to know what it's stained with. Uh, but And there's, there's only one source of light, and that's the ambient light that seems to trickle in through the open front doors. Uh, the only sound that you hear within is the scuttling of vermin from the shadows. And you do th see three statues of men and women on either side of the hall, mostly marred beyond recognition. Uh, and with that, I think we'll pa pause and um, finish for the night. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Should also point out, two of us can't see in the dark, so we probably didn't see any of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's ambient light uh, within there. Uh, so I described just kind of what that entry hall looks like. Uh, as as you get in, you may need to find some alternative light sources. Um, what did the symbol of the uh, emblem look like on the door? Uh, did it look familiar? No, okay. it didn't look familiar. Okay. Uh, it's just kind of a normal fancy crest that nobles sometimes use to distinguish their particular lineages. Okay, I was just checking to see if it was the thing we were looking for, if it was any of the tattoos we've seen. No, it wasn't in any of the tattoos. Okay. Um, so, uh, what did people think of uh, tonight's session? It was fun. I don't know what we're doing yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, part of me is hoping we'll wander in and there'll be like a, like this, the hand, statue's hand will just be there. Like in the middle of the room. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the main enemy of this mansion is a Bigsby's floating hand. My uh, my other my other alternate plan is that uh, just two of us disguise ourselves as Reavers and we lead Joe Far in. 
because they've already identified <laughs> that they're they're fascinated by the possibility of eating him, so it'll look yeah. natural. True, <laughs> except for the fact that none of the people we fought were female, and I am. I hadn't um, thought about that. You're right. That might be that might be get a little bit harder to disguise you. Yes. <laughs> uh. So the original three, or the original ones that you were fighting, there were no men among them, but some of the ones that you saw later uh, could have potentially been female. It's hard to tell, though, because there's... They're all covered in shit. Yeah. N none of them keep up their appearance in any way. Uh but but yeah, what did you guys think about that fight and the the tactics that were used? Uh, I I was fine with it. I sort of assumed with the crossbow person that it wasn't because like they were sort of off in the distance and seemed to be like ready to shoot at us. That it was a little bit more like they were a guard or this was they knew we were coming so were ambushing us a bit. So I was thinking like, well, maybe that's like the smarter one. And it's the cannon fodder who got sent up to the front. Like the crazy, <laughs> stupid ones can go and get into melee range. And the smart one with the crossbow stays back. You think about it, we didn't kill anyone. We're the good guys. Yeah, I mean, that one yeah. guy's probably going to die. Go ahead. <laughs> He'll be fine. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> They're both going to be eaten anyway, you know. Right, there is that chance that bum knee and sword gut are going to get eaten just because they're useless and wounded. <laughs> what, you, you don't think they have good social security or unemployment insurance? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's like no uh, medical disability pay for these two <laughs> during, their, during their convalescence. Or they just have the VA for their insurance, in which case nothing will get done anyway. Right. They were they were two more days away from retirement. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> so, but I haven't figured out like how, I still haven't figured out how they pulled off the heist mm -hmm. of the statue. One possibility that has occurred to me is maybe these were just people disguised as reavers using my brilliant plan, <laughs> and so we're not even in the right part of the city. <laughs> Very or like reasonable. they were, or they were possessed by their demons or ghosts that really wanted this thing. <laughs> the statues, yeah. all three of them are missing hands. Yeah, I've, I haven't worked out what exactly is happening, which is good. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um, any uh critiques or things that you guys would have liked to have seen done differently from tonight's session? Uh, not that I can think of. Me having a working camera and microphone. There you go. Work on that mic. Next yeah. time I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> My PO box is... Come on, guys. You know that I have my, so many problems with computers. You don't want me helping anybody with any of that. I am curious how you're going to reintroduce uh, Varys if Varys turns up next time. He It'll just comes like, falling in yeah. through the ceiling. He, yeah, it just comes. That's what I was saying. It helped. It's like crash into the ground next to us like a meteor. <laughs> yeah that is going to be a little interesting but you know uh he he's also got the mark of finding so you guys should be easy to find <laughs> we'll get into a fight with more reavers and then it'll turn out varus is disguised as one of them and snuck in <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna come into this place and we're gonna find Varys caught up on a spit being slowly turned around like a pig oh man I do feel I don't know who but I feel like we all had so many toolkits that part of my disguise plan was somebody must be proficient with the disguise kit <laughs> uh, actually yes I am see <laughs> and I have one 
<laughs> now that we're inside, you remember. <laughs> well, we might need it to get out. We might need it just to go ahead and get through this place without dying horribly. Yeah, I was pretty close. I was pretty close there. That was, oh my god. I had three vitality. Yep. Yeah, that 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 was pretty close. And then, uh, Solana, how how far did you go down? I went down to eleven HP. Oh, okay. I took ten so damage. You... Okay, so you weren't too the, bad. I just took the rock to the face later on. <laughs> I still have that damage. <laughs> I did use a, a yeah, luck form to avoid getting hit. Yes. It didn't work. It did work. Yeah. It just just it that, that was a different one. I mean, technically, I should have used the luck point for the rock, but I figured I don't know what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when All we're right. going to get a long rest in so I can get that stuff back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> 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 At least there are no uh, ghosts yet. Yeah. I mean, well, as, I, as I showed in my game, like ghosts and raves can really fuck people up pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> so low level undead are sometimes no joke for low level parties. And and Kurt knows from experience how bad shadows can be. Right. Shadows? Oh. I am not afraid of shadows. <laughs> I have a nice Good strength now. I can survive like four hits from shadows if they are incredibly lucky. But uh, yeah, my my eight strength gnome. <laughs> With like, you know, a half dozen or more sometimes shadows flying around. That was a little bit of a problem. You'll be fine. I just, I, I just remember like in my head, Picturing how Ivar uh, was like when he saw the shadows. <laughs> In my head, it's just such a funny image. Uh, all right, so see everyone in two weeks. Yep. Sounds good. See you later. All right. Bye. Take care. All right.